Now the very first thing I usually do is to sort of just smooth off the ends of the axles. And to do that, you fold the sandpaper in half and then twist the axle as you're sliding this back and forth. That way you've got a, a roundness to your axle at the end of it instead of flattening off one end. Then, we only need to do two. There's a third axle included in the kit just in case you need a spare. Okay, here we go. This is the body we're using here. Now you don't need to use this as the body. Anything can be used to the body when these solar car kits. However, it's easy to build onto something, so today we will build onto this five coroplast. The first thing to do is to mark the holes where you want the axle holders to go through. The axle holders are these things, the screw eyes. They'll be going through the body and into these blocks of wood just to stabilize them. So to mark those holes, you want to be fairly careful that they are going to result in axles that run parallel. You could, if you like, take some time and mark at 90 degrees, but you'll find that the holes, all, or rather the lines that are already shown in the core class, should give you enough of an indication of what's parallel. Having started those holes there, you can then put the screw on easily through there. And then holding a block on the back, finish drilling, you know, or rather screwing into the block. So you may have a little trouble with this, but basically you're holding the wood block on the back of it and going in with the screw eyes. If there's a problem, if the screw eye doesn't sink in right away or you're having a bit of difficulty getting it in, you can back up a bit and use the drawing pin, which is we're using as a small awl to make a hole in the wood. But right now this set's going quite nicely, so I'm gonna need. So screw them in, not quite all the way, but sort of almost up to the shoulder. And then the same with the rear axle. Or in this case we don't know yet, which we're gonna have front or rear, we just roll ahead. So four screw eyes in as four axle holders. And this is just a stabilizer. You probably actually get away without using the wood block, but you'd end up with points that would maybe grab at you later. So, that's not too bad. Okay, can you cut from all the points? Once we have the main chassis together, then we start working on the axles, which are going to be carrying the wheels and the gear. Not too much to these. Uh, it's usually useful to sand the, uh, you know, the ends of the dolls we've done already a bit. And let's just try this out. We slide it through here, slide it through there. Problem is it would roll right through. So that's what we use this tubing for. If we cut pieces of tubing, off the tubing be supplied. They don't have to be very wide. These will act as what we call inline shaft retainers. So if we slide one onto here, onto the dowel itself, you might have to get a little tricky with your thumbnail or working it on. If it's too tough for you, just use a smaller piece. Slide that through. Now the axle stays in place and still rotates. Put one on the other side. A bit fiddly, but you want to line them up so that one of the reasons we have these is so the wheels don't bump against the side of the body. So let's try that out. 
Here I've got it on slightly crooked, but not too big a deal. That wheel slides on there. This wheel slides on here, more or less. We can press them together, or you can back up a bit and do a little more sanding if you like. Uh, and slide the plastic pieces over, just so that you've got kind of even but so they spin freely. These wheels are pulleys that can be used for small machines that you might wish to invent in another way or use in other inventions. But right now, the tires become just plain wheels. Now the back is a little bit different because here we want to be able to drive the rear axle. So to do that, let's see if we use this one. slide the 50 tooth gear on. And if it's a bit tight, you're either stuck with a bit more sanding. Twisting sort of helps there. If you can get it on like that, great. You may want to use a small pair of pliers to help you with that, but generally that's what you've got. Now here is our drive wheel. We've got the driven gear and we've got, of course, our tire. But how do we want to have that go on? Well, the same thing again. We're going to use a bit of this tubing. This is always a bit of a tricky part. And see how that works. Nope, way too far. Bring it back out a bit. Oops, let's see here. That might be okay. Try the piece of tubing on the other side. We're gonna, we're gonna cut a smaller piece just to leave the same piece to cut off a bit. Now again, just to point out, the body that we're using, a piece of cord glass, really could be any recycled material or light wood. Here the wheel goes on the other side, the tire goes on that wheel, and we have a movable chassis. What we want to do is run that with this solar power device. So we can clip on, normally actually what I do before going too far with this is I would clip on the solar panel to the back of the motor and then test the motor or test the solar panel in a strong light and see that the motor turned. Here, and this is kind of a serendipity, using the motor clip, it's a sticky back, peel off the back of it, put it right up against the piece of wood and clip the motor into that clip. And you'll see, lo and behold, those gears mesh pretty well. Now if they don't, you'll have to make an adjustment on the bottom here, take the axle apart, and maybe screw it back down a bit or bring it back out a bit to get a nice sort of loose fit, not too tight. And we're pretty much there. We've got this strong light, a solar car that runs, and the only pieces we really, the next part, well, at there, at this stage, you're at sort of test stage, you can run it as you like. It's on a bit loosely. You can take the solar panel back off, the motors, the clips come away, the motor comes away. You can use this to play with other things if you want, or just to, uh, yeah, actually just to drive the things. All clips back in simply. But to hold it in place for any length of time, you might want to use the Velcro that's in the kit. So the Velcro is pretty straightforward. You put a little piece on top of the uh, motor. That would be one place to put it. Kind of like that. Just one piece.
and then match to the back of the solar panel. I'll probably do the bottom piece before we do the motor. Oh, and this is this is what I normally do. You've talked about all kinds of configurations that you might wish to use, but this will work. Velcro at the bottom of the solar panel. That matches up with the Velcro on the wood. It sits there nicely. And you can catch the top of the motor. With another piece of Velcro if you like. Done in the sun. One solar car kit. Now you have a few pieces left over. One is an axle, just if some, through some major mishap something breaks, you've got an extra axle, or if things start spinning loosely, you've got an extra axle. And here the tweezel. Now you may wonder, what's a tweezel? Well, a tweezel is an educational artifact designed to teach you about spin. Everybody knows that the galaxy spins, the solar system spins, the planets are spinning, and the electrons that make up the reality all around you, every single one of those electrons is spinning. So we know from the largest to the smallest, spin is how the universe works. Now, this, we need to have a solid surface, it's unfortunate. Let's just pull this. Now really, I haven't rounded off the end of this tweezel very much. You want to spend a fair bit of time working away the end, so that in the end it sort of looks like a dome on each side. You kind of dome off the, the end of the tweezel. But, once you've done that, you'll have an educational artifact that will teach you, or will allow you to study, spin.